In hopes of further weakening the power of big business, Wilson worked diligently at convincing Congress to lower tariffs. In 1913, he called a special session of Congress to plead his case for significantly reducing tariffs for the first time since the Civil War. This meeting established the precedent of the President delivering the State of the Union Address to Congress in person. Businesses were working hard at lobbying Congress as well. As the tariff debate consumed Washington, D.C., armies of lobbyists hired by corporations to persuade Congress descended on the Capitol. Wilson urged Americans to monitor the votes of their senators. In the end, the Revenue Act of 1913 was signed into law, and the bill, also known as the Underwood Act, is considered a major triumph for President Wilson. With tariff rates drastically lowered, the federal government had to find a way to replace the revenue. The 16th Amendment, ratified in 1913, legalized the use of an income tax. This new tax would generate funding for the federal government by taxing corporate profits and the individual earnings of U.S. citizens. By 1917, the federal government was receiving more revenue from the income tax than tariffs had ever brought in. Today, income and corporate taxes represent the bulk of the federal government's funding. With the income tax in place, Wilson focused his attention on financial reform. Wilson hoped to strengthen America's banking system and to find a way to control the amount of money in circulation. Wilson knew that the supply of money and the availability of credit needed to keep pace with the American economy. Wilson hoped to create a decentralized private banking system that could be placed under federal control. The Federal Reserve Act of 1913 created 12 districts across the U.S. and established a regional central bank for each district. These would serve as bankers' banks for each district. These reserve banks had the ability to issue paper currency during emergency situations, and member banks were granted the freedom to make loans with the money. Federal Reserve Banks could also transfer money to member banks during a crisis in hopes of preventing banks from failing. The Federal Reserve System is seen as another major achievement of Wilson's presidency, and it remains in use today as the basis for controlling and maintaining America's banking system.